Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about Mountain Lion Server's mail server service. And uh, now mail is something that a lot of home users uh, don't normally need to use. Uh, and I almost recommend that you not use it uh, just for a number of reasons. Uh, the first thing is is that uh, running a mail server involves a, a lot of administration. There are things like spam that you need to be aware of blocking. When your uh, server goes down, then your mail service goes down. Uh, there's just a lot of details involved in hosting your own mail service. And so if you don't have to do that and you've got an outside carrier that you can host with, uh, I would recommend doing that. Uh, even though it's tempting because you see the service here, you want to try it out and use it. Now I know there are some of you that want to uh, use the mail service, so I thought I would definitely cover it uh, just so you could see how it works. Personally, I don't use it myself because I let my uh, domain registrar handle uh, all of those kind of details. Uh, but if you want to use it, I want to uh, go over it for you and explain a few details from some of the things that I know. Uh, there's a couple of things to consider if you're going to host your own mail service. The first is whether or not port 25 is blocked on your uh, by your ISP or not. A lot of times ISPs don't want uh, home users hosting their own server because of all of the nightmares of uh, email traffic in and out. They have their own security protocol. So you want to find out if, you, if that port is blocked or if it's open to enable you to use the mail service. Uh, the other thing you want to consider is whether or not you have a static IP address. And uh, a lot of times many home users have uh, don't have static IP uh, addresses. We've got uh, dynamic ones that change uh, all the time. You're sort of leasing it for a while and then somebody else may end up with that domain, um, that IP address, and then you'll get a new one. And so if you're hosting mail, you don't want that IP address changing uh, because then once it changes, all of a sudden now your mail can't get through and your mail's blocked. So you want to check that out too. And then you also want to understand how your DNS is set up because that's going to dictate how you set up your mail. Uh, now there's various ways that your DNS could be set up. Uh, for some of you, your DNS may be set up with your ISP, your internet service provider. And in that case, you'll have to contact them to have them set the right records for your mail to get through so that you can host your own mail. Uh, for some, you've got a split DNS set up, and that's where uh, internally inside your home you control the DNS there, uh, but outside your domain registrar can, uh, handles the DNS on the outside world. And so you set those records up so that you have this sort of split with your router kind of in the middle. Uh, and then for some of you, maybe running businesses and stuff like that, your server may be front-facing. In other words, it may be facing the internet, not behind a router. And it may just be the primary DNS that you have, and it, it functions as the uh, DNS both internal and external. So those are just some things to consider uh, uh, when you're setting that up. I'm going to show you how to set it up kind of with a split DNS from the standpoint that you've got uh, your domain on the outside. Uh, we're going to point some records there and stuff like that. So as you get started, uh, you can see this is the mail service here, and there's a couple of things that I want to show you first. The first thing I want to show you is setting up uh, your uh, domain registrar so that you have the right records set up that are pointing to your server to know that your server is the mail server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up an article here. Uh, it's on this uh, website, Super uh, Geekery, and uh, the reason I'm pointing you to this because I think it does a pretty good job of uh, talking about MX records and things like that. And the other thing is he has a really nice uh, just diagram down here that kind of shows you how your uh, records need to look uh, at your domain registrar. All right, Now the particular service I've got, uh, I let them handle the mail, so I can't show you on my own, so I thought I'd show you this. Uh, a couple of things to point out. What you're going to want to have is, uh, first you're going to want to have an A record uh, for mail.yourdomain.com, uh, Okay, whatever that is, and you want that to be pointing towards your public IP address. Okay, you can see in this instance that everything else is pointing to that same public IP address, but you want to set up this A record right here. Then you're going to want to go into uh, the MX records uh, on your domain registrar, and you're going to want to uh, set up an MX record, which basically is a mail exchange record that allows your mail to get routed back to your server. So you want to do it for your main domain. Okay, that's the primary area there. So, you know, example.com or mydomain.com in this space. And then you're going to want to set up the MX record to point to that A record that you set up up here. So you want it to point to mail.domain, uh, you know, mydomain.com, uh, you want it to point that way to that A record, and that should set everything up for you and make it work. 
And uh, and once you get that on the outside world, that means anytime something comes through your domain, it'll route right back to your server. All right, that's how you want to set those up in the external world. So let me pop this down here, and let me show you how to uh, actually set up your uh, your mail service. So you can see the settings are pretty simple, and they are a lot more uh, simplified than they were in Lion Server. In Lion Server, you had the server admin app where you could run through a wizard that would set up things for you. You had a lot of granularity that you could go through in terms of uh, tweaking your email server. Uh, with Mountain Lion Server, this this is all we have is this page right here. So let me walk you through the settings and uh, show you how it works. So you can provide mail for and you want it to be for your domain. And if I just click this uh, edit button here, you'll have your domain name, which would be like example.com or whatever you've got. You want your domain without anything in front of it because it's anything that would be after the at sign when you send an email out, right? So if you said, you know, john at example.com, anything after the at is what you want to set there. So that's your main domain. You can also set up virtual domains if you want to. If you want to create, you know, a bunch of subdomains that might be, you know, smith.com or something or whatever you want to set up in there. Uh, for most home users, you're not going to use that, but sometimes people want to set virtual domains uh, that they've set up in their DNS and everything, so they'll put that in there. But for now, we're just going to leave this alone. I'm just going to click Cancel. Now, authentication, right now it's set to custom. Let me show you what that means. And that means that you can authenticate using any type of authentication service you want to. And if I just click this here, you can see we can do it for local users, Active Directory, Open Directory, Automatic. Uh, I'm just going to leave it at Custom because that's how it's set up, but you can do it for any one of these. And then you can choose how you want to authenticate. And these are just various ways uh, that you set up your passwords to make sure that it really is you when you're trying to connect. And so again, you have Kerberos, uh, you've got your uh, CRAM uh, MD5, you know, stuff for POP if you're going to set up a, a POP email account, those kinds of things, clear text. So these are, again, just authentication settings. And it's probably fine just to leave these at the default. The only one that's not marked is Kerberos because that adds uh, kind of another layer of authentication. But this should be okay for uh, most users, so I'm going to leave that alone. Now, if you have an ISP that wants you to relay information uh, through them to the outside world when you're sending out your email, you can set that up here. Uh, sometimes ISPs, in order to uh, protect themselves from spam and things like that, they want it to go through their server so that they can clean uh, the email to make sure that it's okay. And so if your um, particular ISP requires that, you can click this right here. And what you would do is put in the outgoing email relay of your um, ISP, you know, probably be some uh, SMTP number, you know, uh, example.com, whatever it is for your particular ISP. They may ask you to put that information in there. And then sometimes they require authentication, which is a username and password. And so you would click this and you'd put in your username and password that you've got with your ISP, and that would allow that relay to work. But uh, I'm not going to set that up. I'm just going to click cancel, but that's available if you need to do that. Then you have the ability to limit your mail to a certain uh, amount per user. And that's usually when you're um, doing your email, you can see that you have limits on, on email. Uh, you know, that, that uh, your inbox can only have so many megabytes in it. And so you can limit set up a limit on here to however many megabytes you want per user. And then that way when their mailbox gets full, they get a warning that says, hey, your mailbox is full, you need to empty some stuff before we're going to let any new email in. That's for your people that might be taking up a lot of uh, server space by hogging their email there. Now, the other thing we can do here is edit the filtering settings. And this is really for your junk mail and virus filtering. And so, again, this keeps out uh, viruses out of your system that could be sent by email. It also uh, filters for junk mail, um, you know, when people are sending spam and things like that. And this really is where it can become a nightmare to host uh, an email server is all of the spam and junk that can get uh, sent into your inbox. And so, built into server, they've got some basic filtering things here. So you can en enable the virus filtering to make sure that it, uh, it keeps those lists up to date and make sure that viruses don't come in. Uh, you can also enable blacklist filtering. Filtering. And now what that does is that uh, basically connects you to, you can see this uh, zenspamhouse.org. It, uh, it'll connect you through this website, and this website basically collects known spam uh, email addresses and things. It's con constantly updating itself. And so what will happen is it will filter your email through that website, and anybody who is on that website, their email won't get through to your server. So that keeps spammers from sending spam into your server, and it's a, it's a free service that's set up to make that happen. And so I suggest enabling that if you're, gonna, if you're going to host an email server. Uh, then you can enable junk mail filtering, and you can set 
uh, the score, right? Your tolerance, right? You might want it to be cautious because you want a lot of stuff to come through, or you want it to be aggressive where you want it just to, you know, um, be really aggressive in what it looks for in the email and put more email in the junk folder than, than not. And so it's up to you on how aggressive you want to be, but there's just this slider here that you can slide back and forth uh, to set that up however you want. So that's the filtering uh, options there for your mail. I'm just going to click cancel here. Now, once you've set everything up the way you want it for mail, basically like anything else, you throw the switch and then the service goes live. You wait for the green uh, dot over here and then you've got your mail uh, service set up and it's up and running. Now for most people that should work okay since you've got your external stuff pointing back into your server uh, you should be in good shape. Uh, what I want to show you though is uh, if you need to set DNS up inside your server. Uh, a lot of times sometimes it'd be clean you set the same records on the inside that you set on the outside. Uh, certainly if you're a front-facing server you need to have all these records set. So I'm going to take you over here to the DNS panel again and uh, we talked about DNS before. I want to show you how to set up an MX record. Now you could uh, come in here and you could uh, click uh, edit host uh, information here and you can click that right there and right on here you can click create an MX record for this host name and that would actually set up that MX record with this host name um, so that you've got that on your on your server. That's how one way it would do it. Now let me just cancel that for a second because let me show you the the more uh, detailed way of doing it uh, because we need really need an A record if you're going to have it extended outside your network. So what you want to do if you just come in here to show all your records you click the plus sign now and you can see here that you can uh, you need to set up a machine record and that's where if I just uh, if I were to click on this what you would do is you would set up an A record that would be mail dot whatever your um, domain is mail dot example dot com so that you have an A record set up there. Then what you would do is come in here and add an exchange record. And so if I clicked on that, basically what you would do is you would have uh, you would have your zone right here, and then you would have your mail server, which would be mail.example.com, for instance, that you would put right there. And then you just kind of put your priority on the exchanger, uh, just in terms of of uh, what priority you want it to have. The highest, I think, is zero. The lowest is ten. And so whatever you want to put on there, you'd put that priority. But it would be in the zone of whatever your domain is. Okay, and then it would be mail.example.com because it would point back to that A record that you set up, and that's how you'd set up your uh, exchange record. And again, uh, you'll notice that if I just pull this back up, it mirrors in many ways what you set up here, right? We set the A record up here, and then we set the exchange record to be in this domain, pointing back to mail.example.com. Again, just like we did uh, right here, right? There's our zone. Same as the zone would be here, and then the uh, exchange server would be mail.example.com, would go right there. You see how that works? So it's very similar in how you would set it up. And then that way you would have your MX record set and everything would be ready to go for your particular zone uh, and what you're looking at setting up there. All right, so that's how you would set that up uh, to set the DNS on the inside. Like I said, once you throw the switch, you should be able to send and receive mail. Now, again, I, I haven't done a lot of this myself. I know there are problems and complications that can come up with it, so I just wanted to warn you about that ahead of time uh, as you're setting it up. But once you get that going, then basically what you can do is go into your system preferences here, go to your mail contacts and calendars, and right in here then you can actually add your mail service. Whatever your mail service is, you can add it. Uh, on on there, add another account, pick add uh, an email account, you click create, and then what it does is it asks you for your full name, your email address, password for this new service, click create, and it will add it into your email. And then you can test it by sending and receiving email to see if it works. Again, sometimes it doesn't work uh, right away, so you may have to troubleshoot uh, on there, but, uh, but at least that helps you get started with uh, the different uh, areas for setting up mail. One more thing you need to do before we go is you want to make sure that your ports are open. Uh, again, once you start the service, uh, if you've got an Airport Extreme uh, router, it'll open up the ports for you right here automatically. Uh, but just in case you don't have that, you need to set them up yourself. I've put those ports on the screen for you so that you can see them and set them up on your own router to make sure things uh, come in and out of your email server and that you're, you're able to send and receive uh, email once you get your service set up. All right, so that's all I have for this week on setting up uh, the mail server. Like I said, most home users, you don't want to uh, bother with it, but uh, if you wanted to know how to set up the various pieces and where to go for it, that's how you do it. Again, much more simplified than it was in Lion Server. Uh, we don't have the, the other uh, server admin to go through, so uh, that's all of the settings that they give us.
So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.